The cloning feature in Get Backup is the best way to create a backup of your entire disk for a rainy day. Note, however, that this basically produces a single uncompressed backup intended for quick restore. If you wish to create a backup with various versions, then the backup feature is what you'll need to use. The first thing we need to do is format the disk that we will be cloning to. Note that this process differs from that on non-Intel Macs. We need to make sure that the external disk is mounted and then open Disk Utility. Select the disk and open the Partition tab. In the Volume Scheme drop-down menu, select the number of partitions you wish to create. For this video, we'll select one. Then we need to click on the Options button below and select the GUID Partition table, which allows you to use the disk to boot up Mac OS X. Enter in a name for the volume. Make sure that the format is set to Mac OS Extended Journaled. And click Apply. Note that this erases all of the info on the external disk. Setting up a new cloning project is both simple and quick. We just have to select the source, which in our case is Macintosh HD, and the destination, Snow Leopard. Everything in the Files and Folders list is basically self-explanatory. The triangles open up collapsible lists, and deselecting a checkbox excludes a file or folder from the clone, but I do not recommend excluding any files. Now let's set up the properties. Cloning projects can be set to synchronize automatically to save you time. Each consecutive backup will erase files that have been deleted from the source and update those that have been modified. You can see that the schedule can be set down to the hour and minute. I'll opt to clone on Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m. Click OK to get back to the main interface. That's about it. Now we just need to click the big blue play button and enter in a project name to start. You are then prompted for your password since cloning copies some files that require an admin's permission. You can now see that the program is cloning our files. Note that the first cloning will take up quite a bit of time, possibly a few hours. But the synchronization process will take significantly less time depending on how many changes have taken place on the source disk. To boot up using the clone, you should connect the disk, press and hold the Option button, and turn on the computer without letting go of that button. Then you will see a screen with icons for all of the bootable disks connected to the computer. Now all you have to do is double click on the clone's icon and wait for it to boot up. Now you can work using this disk, but the best thing to do is to either replace the crashed disk with the clone, or use the clone feature of Get Backup to transfer the data from the clone to the replacement disk. Backing up and restoring your data doesn't get any easier than that.